Okay, here we go, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a screen for these euros. They are huge little cocoons. I'm going to try measuring both ways. This little cocoon I got out of here. Okay. Okay, I picked it up. So that way we're showing... What is that a 3.72 millimeter that way but it won't fall through the other way because it's got these two little tips on it and so it's looking like 5.32 milliliter probably I mean should I pick it up Y'all can see that's what the size of it is. Gosh, this is... Oops, that made it bigger. Okay. Picked it up. Oop. So if I pick it up, I'm not going to actually have the true size with those little tips. Because I can't pick it up by the tip, obviously. But, come on, little guy. Ooh. Okay, this is a 4.2 millimeter. So, what I'm thinking is, it's got to have this big screen here. And it fell through. Now, if we put this here... And open it up. It's a 4.97 hole. I believe that's what this one is also. No. This one is a touch smaller. It's a 4.5. Okay. Okay. It's a 4.9. So, a touch smaller, but... Uh-oh. Where did the cocoon go? Here it is. Below here. I believe the cocoon falls through it just fine. We'll put it here. Oh, no, it didn't. So, right there, I mean, you would have to bounce it around. So, see how that one will not? 4.5. I mean, if you fall through at the right angle, which I'm sure you would, if you could bounce. Oh, he pretty much rolled all the way down there and didn't fall through. There it went through. It's got to fall through at the right angle with this one. Okay. So the 4.5 on that. Maybe a little small for the euros. Um, I feel like though that we want it to be. I'm kind of squishing him up quite a bit. That was rough on him. So this is probably the screen for euros. That's a huge hole everybody. Huge. Um, so gosh, I really don't know what you're going to be sifting a ton of other stuff with that, but, um, so this one, it would not fit through, but the other castings do, but I feel like I like this mesh screen better. Let's just, so that's just the really cleaning out debris and then I'm gonna try to measure gee wizards that is just oh okay I see uh that's showing a 2.6 that way millimeter and a 2.6 millimeter that way this screen size I really like for the cocoons of the red wiggler and the um I mean not all of mine fall through there but it's better than nothing. And then, okay, that's a 2.6. This is a great one for the castings, um, but it is showing it to be, boy, it says zero. 
Okay, let's put it to zero. Okay. Open it up is 1.8 millimeter by. Oh, that says 1.7 milliliter. Millimeter. I'm sorry, it's not liquid, it's a metric. Um, so these. Is showing a three, three milliliter. What did I say this one was? Because I feel like I like this mesh better. This is a 2.74, 2.7, three by a 2.7. And this one was what? 2.9 so this is a little bit bigger so I think maybe I like this better because this one doesn't always this one doesn't always let the cocoons through so with at a 2.6 it's a little smaller than the round which this is 2.7 and this I was showing 2.9 so this one's going to be a better one for sifting out the red wiggler cocoons and this one is going to be the size for the euros i don't think all my euros are going to be that big so it's possible we might be able to go with that smaller round but this round this is a seat cleaning if i could take this this is probably the exact same size as my screens out there. So I could probably, I could probably use that and I would probably be happier with it. But I hate to cut this screen up. These are very, very expensive, these seat cleaning screens. So you want to take very, very good care of them. I'm going to call the seat cleaning company. And I'm going to find out what kind of sizes they have now that I kind of know what some of my worm cocoon sizes are. You might have to do that too. You might have to um, get some of your cocoons out and uh, measure them according to your food stocks. Um, some food stocks, they can produce larger. I'm going to try just to dig out couple more cocoons and we'll measure my euro cocoons um and so that might have just been a one of a kind cocoon that was that big and not all of my euros are that big so let's just dig around a little bit and look for some more euro cocoons that might be a different size so like i said this bin did not produce cocoons really well. I think it was just too dry. I'm still learning my <laughs> too wet, but I haven't learned too dry yet. So I'm thinking this is probably too dry for them. Uh, this time when I reset, last time it was super soaking wet. So here's a couple cocoons. There's one here, a little, little brown. A little brown. Okay. I'm going to get these three right here that I see, and oh, there's four. Okay, well, we'll just measure them all and kind of get an average here of what our euros can do. I'm hoping that's not all from just one worm. Uh, okay, I lost that fourth one. There it is. Um, and then, oh, that's just an empty casing. And then we get an average then I'll call the seed company and ask them kind of what sizes they have okay there's one for these guys for their um, seed cleaners and I'm hoping there's some in between sizes and now that I'm kind of playing around with these screens and seeing which ones I like best I have a little bit of a better idea of what is going to make me happy. So I'm willing to go ahead and spend now that my mind's a little more. Okay. Let's just 
just scoot it over here. And I just want to get some way. <clears throat> uh, I already forgot what that first one measured, that Euro uh, cocoon. I'll have to. Uh... <laughs> this is kind of fun, huh? Okay, this is one is a three point three four by because they're wider one way than they are the other. I'll tell you that. That's about a four point one four. These are millimeters. Okay, so putting that somewhere so it can stay nice and moist. Okay, this one. This way, I just do it until I can pick it up. 3.53 by the sides. Then I'm, I'm going to just pick the sides where those things are. 4.3. Come back. Okay. There is a... 3.32 by it's a little bit smaller cocoon here it's got a little bit of dirt on it too so um this is a smaller one so it's a approximately gosh some of these are hard to get a hold of I'm going to say a 3.8. So it's a little smaller, I told you. <laughs> but these are pretty big cocoons anyway. I'm impressed with how big they are. Uh, this is a 3.31. You know, in the bee world, what we were doing <laughs> when we would hatch our queens, we weigh them. <laughs> We would weigh them to see how big they were. It was getting competitive, let me tell you. We had to stop. Stop. It was getting too crazy. Oh, that's a 3.8, but I feel like I'm not measuring it quite right. This is a big one, I feel like, and not quite doing it justice from the tip to the tip. A uh, 4.2. Okay. Not my biggest one, but those are my Euro cocoon size. So, I'm hoping uh, that then we have the screen sizes that I have. I can shut that off. And then uh, we can call the company and find out what kind of screens they have. Uh, seed cleaning. Uh, you can look up the Clipper uh, seed cleaning company, I think. Look up different seed cleaning companies and they sell those screens. And then you call them and then whatever size that you want for your, you know, device you're going to either make or you need it to fit one of the old cleaning, seed cleaning mills like I um, fixed up for a cocoon sister. And then um, they'll send them to you, but they're very, very expensive. So <laughs> be uh, forewarned to choke when they tell you what a small piece costs. Um, that's why you want to save your old ones and take very good care of them. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's my short video on my new camera setup here to see if you guys can see better. I think now, not the whole bend, but this is as good as it's going to get. I think if I scoot it back, and you guys can see quite a bit from where I'm at from there. And then the nice thing is this is on a little wheelie stand. So I can kind of move it to the different areas where I'm working. Not that I'm going to be doing this all the time. But just to give you an idea of how my setup works. Because I want it to run super smooth. Because on the microbial farm we are not going to have a lot of extra time at all. Ever. <laughs> 
forever. It is lock and load 24 seven, go, go, go. And uh, so we gotta make all the cuts when it comes to time that we can. And so having a system that operates very smoothly and very efficiently is extremely important. So thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And make yourself a permanent fixture here at the Carbon Flip. Go ahead and turn off the notifications so you don't get sick and tired of seeing me. And check back in about eight months to see how we have progressed. We are working hard here to try and produce food for you uh, by eliminating the use of synthetic chemicals and fertilizers. We are going to be making our own fertilizers that are eco-friendly using the vermicose, vermicastings, the vermiculture, and also um, we're going to do some thermophilic composting in a bioreactor extracting the microbes off of that substrate and applying it as a liquid amendment to the soil so we can correct the ecosystem and then use those microbes to our benefit to create nitrogen real time in the soil to feed the plants. Okay guys, the more people that are here, the more people I have to be accounted for or be accountable to so spread the word far and wide, and I'm going to try as hard as I can not to let y'all down. Okay, stay tuned. I hope to see you in the future.